All right, would you raise your right hand? Do you swear and affirm the testimony that you will provide to this court will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. All right, you may lower your hand, take a seat in that chair, and pull yourself up to the microphone. Um, there's a court reporter here. She'll be taking out everything you say, so make sure you speak clearly into the microphone. Okay. All right, would you please state and spell your name for the record? Tiana McCraney, T-E-A-U-N-A-M-C-C. R A N N Y. And Ms. McCraney, um, are you familiar with the area of Forest Parkway at the intersection of Riverdale Road? No. Not too familiar, but I was there. Mm -hmm. But have you traveled that area before? Yes. And were you in the area of Forest Parkway and Riverdale Road on May 7, 2019? Yes. Now, do you recall why you were in that area that day? I dropped a coworker off from work at her house. And what road were you actually traveling on? Do you recall? No, not good with directions. Okay, I'm going to show you what has been previously introduced as State Exhibit 2A for demonstrative purposes. So is that the area where you were traveling on, on May 7, 2019? Yeah. Yes. Now, as you look at that area um, on that map, can you tell me which road you were actually traveling on? And if you need to take a closer look, Your Honor, make sure you step down. Yes, Now, are you familiar with an incident involving a shooting that took place in that area on May 7, 2019? Yes. Okay, and can you explain to this court what you observed? Um, I was in the lane closest to that little, uh, I guess, divider. That's where the crosswalk is. You can get down a point to, oh, okay. to explain. Um, I was coming down here in this little area right here. Um, it was like a, a pickup truck right there and a jeep came and like ran over this little spot and blocked him okay. and um blocked him from driving so he abruptly braked and um it caught my attention because it was like really aggressive i thought it was just road rage at the time and then uh, a woman popped out of the car and she that get that about the truck to him a bunch of times and she pulled out a gun and I remember it was a lot of traffic so people we couldn't really move and people started honking to get the heck out of the way and um, I remember her back was to me because I was kind of I was really close to them and I couldn't I didn't really have anywhere to go I was blocked in and um, she started she was talking to him I don't remember what they were saying at this time anymore, but um, I remember he, he backed up a little bit and he hit her truck and she jumped through the window and started fighting him. At that time, people were really honking and I had a little bit of time to, a little bit of space to move up, so I pulled into the lane that they would have been in to uh, pull over because I knew I was gonna stay Cause, uh, and then call the cops. So I was on the phone with the cops at the time. Okay, so when you first saw the Dodge Dakota, he was merging from Forest Parkway onto Riverdale Road? Yes. And then you observed the Jeep. How did she maneuver the vehicle once he merged onto Riverdale Road? Did she come around his vehicle? Yeah, she went around his vehicle and blocked him from being able to go anywhere. Now when she, when the Dodge Dakota was cut off, did it hit the Jeep at that time? No, it was close, but he, did, he didn't hit her. 
Now, can you explain the traffic conditions on that day on Riverdale Road? It was busy both ways, like blocked. And there were, I remember there was a cop, there were, uh, it was a cop car at the highway. Like, I don't know what they were doing, but um, it was a lot of traffic. It was like very congested. So was traffic moving? It was moving, but it was very slow. Now, when you saw the Jeep jump the median and block the Dodge Dakota, how, when did the person jump out of that Jeep? Immediately. And when the person jumped out of that Jeep, where did they go? Straight to his window on the driver's side. Now, as you sit here in the courtroom today, do you see the person that was driving that Jeep? Yes. And can you identify that person by where they're sitting in the courtroom and what they're wearing? Yellow, uh, ca dress casual outfit right there. All right, let the record reflect the witnesses identified the defendant in open court. Now, when the defendant jumped out of the Jeep and headed toward the Dodge Dakota, what, if anything, did you hear her say? I heard her say, get the F out of the car. She just kept cussing at him, get the F out of the car. Now, could you tell whether the Mr. Herring's window was up or down? I don't. I don't believe that it was completely up or down, but um, I don't remember. I'm not going to say. But how close was the defendant to his window? Very close to his window. And can you describe the defendant's demeanor? Aggressive. Now, were you able to see Mr. Herring inside of his vehicle during this incident? Yes. And what did you observe of Mr. Herring? He looked uh, confused. And could you recall if he was saying anything back to the defendant? Not at this time. I did, but I don't remember anymore what he said. Now, at any point in time when you observed the altercation, did you see Mr. Herring's hands at any time come out of the truck? No. Could you see him attack the defendant in any way? No. I mean, I, I did, yeah, I did see a struggle um, after she jumped in his car, jumped through his window. So the defendant jumps over the median and cuts Mr. Herring's vehicle off. Yes. And you're saying she immediately jumped out of the truck and went towards his driver's side window, mm -hmm. cursing, telling him to get out of the car. Mm -hmm. And at some point, there is a struggle. Oh, yes. And at what point did she, at what point in time did she jump inside of the vehicle? After he hit her Jeep. Now, what is the defendant doing at the driver's side window before Mr. Herring kind of hits her Jeep? Uh, holding him at gunpoint and cussing at him. Now, when did you observe the defendant take out the gun and point it at Mr. Heron? Um, very shortly after she got out of her truck. Was it before or after he hit her vehicle? Before. Now, did you observe the defendant actually shoot Mr. Aaron? No. 
you have pulled your car up prior to that. Yes. Now you made a 911 call um, during this incident, correct? Yes. I'm gonna show you what has been previously marked as Exhibit 6. Do you recognize it? Yes. And how are you able, what do you recognize it to be? My 911 call. And how are you able to recognize that that is the 911 call you made? I listened to it initially, my initials. And as you listen to it, is it the same 911 call that you made on May 7th, 2019? Yes. All right, state moves into evidence, state specific six. Any objection? Presuming once again, once it starts, she hears the uh, 911 and her voice, no objection. Okay, I it without an objection. All right, permission to publish, Your Honor? Yes. Um, 
I did not see her in her Jeep when she got out. She was immediately aggressive. I I didn't understand what was going on. I just thought it was like road rage at the time. Maybe, I, I didn't understand, but that was the first time I saw her when she actually got out of the truck and was immediately aggressive. And you say that shortly after she jumped out of that Jeep, she pulled her gun? Yeah, yes. And went immediately to Mr. Herring's window? Yes. You never, did you ever see her attempt to de-escalate the situation? No, I don't recall her trying to de-escalate anything. And as you sit here today, you stated that Mr. Harry looked confused. Yes. Now, when she blocked Mr. Herring's vehicle in, did she block it in a way where he was able to maneuver around her or get away? Um, no. Being that he was, because she did that abruptly when he was actually about to go and he had to jerk and stop, um, he was very close to her car. I don't believe that he could have backed, got like backed up and been able to go around her, especially without hitting her since she was in front of his window on the, on the driver's side. And did you ever see him physically get out of that vehicle? No. Now, did you observe Mr. Harry after he was shot? No. Did you observe the defendant after Mr. Harry was shot? Yes. And what was her demeanor at that time? Calm. Like, aloof. She just, and when I saw her, she had the gun and the cops were coming and she just was like, here, gave it to them. Like she, I don't know. There wasn't a lot of emotion in there. Now you testified that you observed um, Mr. Herring hit the defendant's Jeep. Yes. Where was the defendant standing when that happened? Um, his drivers, where she was the whole time. So she wasn't in front of his vehicle? And there was not, a, not space for her to be in front of his vehicle, no. So he wouldn't have been attempting to run her over? No. Now, you talked about the altercation um, and that happened inside of the vehicle between the defendant and Mr. Herring. Could you see what was happening with their hands? I just remember her hitting him. Um, I started to pull up because it was getting a little, because she had that gun, I didn't want to risk a straight bullet being right behind them. So I started pulling up and, um, I, that's, and I heard the shot when I was like in front of, it was a truck, I believe, but I pulled, I pulled up. So I don't rem remember too much. I just remember she started hitting him and I was like, I just drove away. Now as she's hitting Mr. Herring, could you see if Mr. what Mr. Herring was doing at the time? No. Okay. Did you see him respond and hit her back? I don't remember. Okay. All right, no further questions, Your Honor. Attorney Hatoker, cross examination.
Ms. Ms. Crane? Yes. Okay. My name is Matt Tucker. I'm the attorney for Ms. Payne here. I have a few questions to ask. Um, so your testimony you gave so far is that she jumped over the curb and cut this vehicle off, correct? Yes. Okay. And you saw where they ended up because you were right behind them or right in front of them? Yes. Are you asking me for clarification? Yes, ma'am. Were you in front of them or behind them? I was behind. Really, I was like this, side by side, so they're merging. And they would have been in the next lane to me if he had been able to keep driving. But there was a yield right there, so he's waiting for traffic. So you say there was a yield, there was a yield sign there? I believe so. Well, they need to yield to traffic because they were merging into a lane. Okay, what, what I'm asking you from what you saw that day, mm -hmm. did you see a yield sign? I don't remember. Okay. And you're saying that you were side by side? Originally, yes. Side so. by side the Jeep or the truck? The truck. Okay. So then you would be behind the Jeep, correct? Sure, yes. Yes. Well, I mean, I'm asking you if you remember. And if you'd like, if you're on, if I may approach. Yes. Okay. I, So the picture you have in front of you, as you can see, that's the way the truck and the car ended up, correct? Yes. Where's the median in that picture? There's no median in, from this angle in this picture. Okay. okay. It's behind it. Okay. So there's that. Okay. Do you see the median? Yes. Okay. And is there any need to jump that median for these vehicles to end up in that position? No. So your testimony was that she jumped the median. Now that you've refreshed your memory, do you believe that she jumped the median? Mm. She did go around him, but... I 
I see the pictures, but I do believe that she ran over the median. Okay, if she ran over the median mm -hmm. as it's here. Yeah, I see it. Okay. Would she have ended up in that position in front of the truck if the truck was stopped, as you said, waiting to merge into traffic? Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, Mr. Green, you have to articulate so that our court reporter can record what you do, mm -hmm. et cetera. Oh, okay. able to? Thank yes. you. Gotcha. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm sorry, can you repeat your question? All right, knowing where the median is from that picture, refreshing your memory, refreshing your memory from the pictures in front of you, for the vehicles to be in that position, was it necessary for a car to jump a median to be there? No. Okay, so having seen that and seen these pictures, do you recall that she did or did not jump the median to get in front? No. Okay. So, do you recall writing a statement to the police on that day? Yes. I may approach your honor. Can you tell us what number you're using? Uh, th this will be defense exhibit number six that she's reviewing. That had six. I'm sorry. Six, four, and seven. Okay, so. Should we know where? Eight. Eight? Yes, ma'am. Does that look like a fair and accurate representation of what you wrote that day? Yes. Is that your signature at the bottom? Yes. At this time, Your Honor, I would like to introduce defense exhibit number eight. Any objection from the state? No objection, Your Honor. I'm no objection. All right, now that you've had time to review that document, did you ever mention about a, ju a jeep jumping a median to cut off the truck? No. Okay. And looking at that uh, statement you made, your testimony here today is that she jumped out with a gun and held that gun point, correct? Yes. Okay. From that statement you wrote right there, did you say anything about her jumping out with a gun and holding him at gun point? No. Okay. And in fact, in that statement, you said that they started hitting and then a gun was pulled, correct? No. Okay. What did you say? Uh, she cut him off and he had to break suddenly and he almost hit her by like an inch. Then she hopped out so quickly, screaming and pulled up her shirt with her gun. Then she started hitting him. Okay. Now the part there that he did not hit the vehicle at the beginning, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. But then you did state that he did ram the vehicle or hit the vehicle, correct? Yes. So there was a space between them that he didn't hit. He had, a, he had an area of space between the two vehicles, correct? There was no accident at right. that time. Yes. And I believe in your testimony, it said he could have backed up and left without hitting her, correct? You just, no. You just stated it a second ago. You said he could have pulled back and gone away without hitting her. No, there was no space between their vehicles for her to be in front of him to hit her. And she was at his driver's window. So if he was trying to get away, he would have hit her. Okay, ma'am, your testimony just a minute ago, you said that she was at the window mm -hmm. and he could have yes. backed up and drove off without hitting her. Okay, I don't recall saying that. And if I did say that, I don't agree because she was at his driver's window. So, no. And Your Honor, I'm not sure if the court reporter can repeat back exactly what she said, um, but if it is possible, I'd like for the reporter to allow her to hear what she said previously.
Can you? Yes. And in the meantime, Yara, if I may publish the other paper. When the Dodge Dakota was cut off, did it hit the Jeep at that time? Uh, the witness said no, it was close, but he didn't hit her. And then uh, Hunt, Ms. Hunter asks, can you explain the traffic on Riverdale Road? It was busy both ways, blocked. There was a cop car at the highway. I don't know what they were doing, but a lot of traffic. It was very congested. Does that sound around the, the point you're talking about? It's, it's the question, line of question she was asking, and then she asked about could he pull away and She blocked Mr. Heron's vehicle, and did she, did she block it in a way where she was able to go around her vehicle? He was able to go around her vehicle, vehicle and get away. No, I don't believe he could have backed up, backed up, and then been able to go around her, especially without hitting her, since she was to the front of his window on the driver's side. Did you see him physically get out of that vehicle? No. So, so basically, you were saying that she was at the front side of his window, correct? Yes. Okay, but you said he, she jumped in his window. Okay. How could she have jumped in his window and been in the front of his window? She was at his driver's door. Just okay, so want to be clear. She was at his driver's door. <laughs> so she was at his driver's door. She wasn't in the window. She hadn't jumped in the window, correct? Not at the time. Okay. And <clears throat> you said that you were at the side of the vehicle, the side of the Jeep or the side of the truck? The side of the truck. 
since they're in the same lane, both of them. Yes. So you're telling me that the truck is in a lane and the Jeep is in the lane, but the lane is going straight forward according to that uh, diagram right there beside you? No. Okay. So there's a lane that's going straight and a lane that is merging, correct? Right. And you said there was a yield there, correct? Yes. Okay. So if the car and the Jeep appears to be going straight down that one lane, correct? Yes, to the picture, yeah. Okay, so your testimony here today is that she jumped a median, that you do not see a median that she could have jumped in that picture, correct? Yes. And by jumping this median, somehow she got in front of him and stopped him where he could not go around. Yes. Okay, is there space to go around as you look at that picture right there? This is not a picture that was taken during this. Everyone moved out of the way. So I wouldn't say this is an accurate assessment to go off of, especially if I'm saying there's a bunch of traffic and we don't see any other cars here. There was not space at the time with the other cars around okay, when so this did happen. So you're saying that you agree that is the end result of the two vehicles, correct? Yes, I can okay. see right here. And you're telling me that there was a car on the right side of the truck? The left side okay. of the truck. All right, if you flip the. Yeah. I'm sorry. If I may approach it. Yeah. So if the lanes are coming this way, mm -hmm. they're coming this way. You yeah. Can be the right side. I don't ask him to speak so that you're. <laughs> yeah. and so I can, I'll, I'll speak loud. And so I yes. can hear, please. And especially for So our as you see the picture, as it, the flow of traffic right there, correct? Mm hmm. So yes. That would be the right side of the truck, correct? Right? Yes. All right, was there any cars on the right side of that truck? At the time this happened, yes. Why would there be a car on the right side of that truck? If that lane is merging into the other lane, why would there be a, truck, a car on the other side of the truck? You just told me, because I said no at first, that there was, it was the left side, which is where traffic would be. When you came and approached me, you said it would be on and the I other side. This commentary. I mean, I'm asking a specific question. If you're there would be no cars person, on the right side. Okay. And you are on the left side, correct? Yes. Okay. So you could see the truck, but you could not see the Jeep. The Jeep would be in front of you, correct? Yes. Okay. And you said that you could see her jump into the window. That's what you initially said, but then you said, no, she was outside the door, correct? I said both. Yes. So she jumped in that little small window right there. <clears throat> yes. Okay. So while she's in the window, yes. you can't see anything beyond the window, correct? Yes. Okay. You can't see any hands. You can't see what's going on because from your testimony, she's in the window. Yes. Okay. So how could you see her hitting him? Or how could you see a gun being, him being held at gunpoint if she's in the window? Because when she got out of her vehicle, she had him at gunpoint. She pulled out her gun. It's, um, Okay. Yes, she got out of her vehicle and she held him at one point. He hit her vehicle. They started to fight. I moved up because I don't want to be by that. So when you moved up, did you move mm -hmm. up to where the Jeep was or past the Jeep? I moved <clears throat> past the both of them. Okay. So it's fair to say that once you moved up past the Jeep, you couldn't see anything behind you? It's fair, yes. Okay. So. You're saying that she came out, she's holding him at gunpoint, and she decides to jump into the vehicle. 
Why would she have jumped in the vehicle? Is it because you said he ran her I'm car? Sorry, yeah, I'm she just said it, Your Honor. I'm just clarifying. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. I believe he asked why. Would she do that? Correct. Who What's your okay. response? I would praise Your Honor. Okay, so I sustain the objection. You can refer From the position you were at, watching what was going on, you saw, you your testimony here today is that she was holding him at gunpoint and then jumped into the window, correct? I'm just trying to clarify so I can go forward because of the miss construed that was said earlier and that's all there was to clarify. So I I'll overrule the objection and just allow the clarification. Go ahead, attorney. So that part is understood, correct? She held him at gunpoint and he hit her car and they started to fight. Yes. All right. And you said they started to fight. Yes. All right. Fighting before she jumped in the window or or how were they fighting? How could you see them fighting? I saw her hit him. I began to move up. I looked back. She was more in his window. I didn't see what they had going on at that point. It's obviously that they're fighting. And, uh, and I pulled in front of them so that I could call the cops. Okay, so you said before she jumped in the window, from your testimony. They were fighting, correct? You saw him, I'm sorry, you saw her hit him, correct? Yes. Which hand did she hit him with? I don't remember. Which hand was the gun in? I believe it was her, I don't remember. Thank you. Okay, now, did you say anything in your initial report to the police about her jumping in the window? In my initial report. Yes, and if you need to refresh. Yes, can I? Okay. Okay. And you said, did I say anything about? Jumping in the window. No. Okay. And at the point that you say a, a, an argument or a fight pursued, you had pulled in front of both vehicles, so you couldn't see really what was going on. Yes. But you could see clearly the truck hit the Jeep, correct? Yes. And he had previously not hit the Jeep before she came to the window, correct? Yes. Okay. But there were, and there were no cars on the right side of the truck, correct? Yes. Now, when you called 911 <clears throat> at the very beginning, you said something to the effect of she shot him. And the second time it sounded like you said she shot him as if it were a question. Were you speaking to somebody else when you asked that question? Yes. Okay. And you were speaking to either confirm what you said or to, what, what were you asking? The other person that you said did she she shot him. Yes, I was confirming. Okay, and who were you speaking to? The other side um, of the street, people were screaming that she shot him. So I just confirmed with them. Okay, but you said that you couldn't see her sh shoot him, and. Mm -hmm. Is yes. that correct? Yes. Okay. And that you were in a position where you could not see back anything after, as you said, she jumped in the window, correct? Yes. Okay. So you didn't see him shoot him, correct? Right, yes. Okay. And you didn't see anything after he rammed her car and, as you said, she jumped in the window? Yes, I pulled up. Okay. All right. Now, after the situation, did you hear the story on the news? No. You didn't? Okay. I don't watch the news. Okay. Had anybody talked to you about the situation? No. Nobody called to talk to you? To follow up on what you wrote by the police? 
Oh, the, a news reporter did, like a news channel. Okay. A news channel did contact you, correct? Yes. And you talked to this new, I'm not going to ask you the content because it's hearsay. But in your explanation, um, did you give the same story to the news that you're giving today in testimony, or are you, or did you give the story that you wrote down? I don't remember. You don't remember. Okay, but you do remember talking to the media, correct? Yes. Okay, and did you talk to anybody else after speaking with the media? The, the, uh, yes. Okay. And Bonnie. Bonnie? And that's fair. I'm, I'm not. I'm not throwing trick questions out here. I'm just asking. Okay. So you talked to the state. Yes. Did you talk to the law enforcement? Yes. Okay. And in those statements there, did you ever have an interview down at the Clayton County Police Department? No. So basically, your statements of what occurred were written down on that document that you wrote, correct? Yes. And what you told to the media, correct? Yes. And what you told to the state, correct? Yes. Okay. And today you're testifying that she came out of the vehicle, held him at gunpoint. Mm -hmm. Yes. He rammed her vehicle. Yes. She jumped in the window. Yes. And then you pulled in front so you couldn't see anything else. Yes. And one more thing. You said that uh, you did hear an exchange between the driver of the truck and uh, Miss Payne, correct? Yes. You just couldn't understand the words that were being said? The main thing I remember is her saying get the F out the car. But no, I don't remember their dialogue. Okay. But it was loud on both sides, correct? Some. I was able to hear, I don't remember what he said, but I heard some of what he said. I didn't hear all of what he said. But Just her. I heard her a lot. But you heard some of what he said? Yes. What did he say? I, again, don't remember. I just remember I heard it. I remembered last year, but I don't remember anymore. I don't want to make anything up. So you remembered it last year, correct? And you don't remember it today? Right. Did you write it down or did you tell anybody last year what you heard and what you recall? I recorded it. I don't have the recording, but no, other than that, no. Why did you feel you had to record it? I didn't want to forget. But here you are today, at the time of trial, and you didn't listen to that Objection recording? Not. I asked an answer. She said she does not remember, she does not recall. She said she recorded it, okay. and she recorded it for her memory, and I'm asking her, did she listen to that recording today, or before today? So I'll overrule the objection and allow her to answer. So did you listen to that recording before coming here today? I did not. I don't have that phone anymore. But your intent to record it was so that you could remember it for today? It was. And, and you stated that, hold on a second. Just to clarify for me, one last question, I'll be there. You're stating when you moved forward, you couldn't see what was going on at the vehicle, correct? That's correct. So when you moved forward, what was the last thing you saw? Her in the window of the truck? Uh, yes. I thought you were going to give me an or, but yes. I'm going to keep it short and sweet because we've been up here a little while. So the last thing you remember is seeing her in the window. Yes. No further questions.
All right, Ms. McCraney, you have Defense's Exhibit 8 in front of you, and that is a copy of your statement? Yes. Can you read that statement? The merging lane on Forest Parkway and Riverdale Road, I was coming down the right lane before the merge. She cut him off, and he had to break suddenly, and he almost hit her by like an inch. Then she hopped out so quickly, screaming, and pulled her shirt up with her gun. Then she started hitting him. I pulled up when I saw the gun. He hit her car. Then she started hitting him. I was like one foot in front of the car and called the cops. We heard a shot. There were two cops at the highway merge that came. And you made this statement, you wrote this statement on May 7th, 2019? Yes. Which was the same day the incident occurred? Yes. On the same day that you observed what happened that day? Yes. And as you stated in your statement, he almost came within one inch of hitting the defendant's vehicle? Yes. So when the defendant keeps characterizing that he rammed her vehicle, is that accurate? No. How would you describe it? It would have been like a, a fender bender. He didn't have a lot of space to do really any damage to our vehicle, so. All right, no further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Um, are we through with this witness? May she be excused? No, Your Honor, I have to call. You may proceed, Attorney Joker. So, as you were referring back to your statement, yes, you said that she came up, she pulled her shirt up with a gun, and um, you pulled up right when you saw that, correct? That's what your statement said? I don't believe that's what I read. Can I get the statement back, please? Thank you. Okay, and what was your question? Okay, you stated that you said that you saw her come out screaming. Um, she started hitting him and pulled, and then you pulled up. So you said you saw her immediately get out of the car, pull a gun, started hitting him, and then you pulled up, correct? Yes. Okay, so if you pulled up, how could you see anything else occur? According to your statement you wrote then? Yes. So how could you have seen anything else go on once you pulled up? I did not. Okay, and in your statement here, you didn't say anything about her jumping in the window, correct? I did not. But you said, um, you said you pulled up about a foot in front of the car, correct? Yeah, I was like a foot in front of the car. So how could you have pulled up and been like a foot in front of the car? Were you in front of the car, to the side of the car? I was to the side of the car. Okay. I'm so, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I was very shaken that day. Um, I wanted to be as detailed as possible, but my thoughts were jumbled. So this is not exactly in chronological order here. Okay, but you were you said you were jumbled and you were not you were trying to be as, as specific as you could, correct? Yes, and so, I, I wanted to write more, but there was not a lot of space. So I put to what I thought was necessary at the time. So your statement here today is when they handed you paper to write mm -hmm. that you felt you had to keep it as short as that paper? Or is those lines given? Yes. What's on the back of that paper you wrote? Nothing. Could you have written on the back of the paper? Possibly, yes. Okay. Yes. And because you were jumbled and you were saying you pulled up one foot in front of the vehicle, that may not have been accurate because you were a little bit jumbled and trying to be precise, right? 
I was like a foot in front of a car when I called the cops. Okay. I pulled up after that. So you say like a foot. Yes. So when you say like a foot, it could have been more than a foot, it could have been less, right? Right. Okay. So when you state that it was like one inch, it's the same concept. It could have been like an inch, it could have been more, it could have been less, correct? Sure, yes. Okay, and then you keep smiling, do you find this comical? Um, no. It's a coping mechanism, but I feel like No further questions, John.